Setting up a new physical interface can be cumbersome because first you have to get them cabled up and then you even need to be lucky enough to have an interface left. In this video I will show you how to add a nearly unlimited amount of interfaces without cabling. If this is your first time here, I'm Lars von Consigas. We call ourselves the Palo Alto Networks Experts because the next generation firewall is our passion. It's what we do all day every day, migrating firewalls, providing managed services and most important, implementing security best practices. When I started to work with this box in 2010, barely anyone knew about Palo Alto Networks. But as an engineer, I felt that this solution will change the world of cybersecurity. And yes, today we know it did big time, because it's one of the few security solutions that can truly secure your network. However, there's a caveat. You need to set it up in the right way in order to be effective. Because while it's awesome, it's not a magic box. So over the years we became a professional service partner for Palo Alto Networks, as well as one of a few elite authorized training centers. And was working in the field for so many years and being a trainer, I would like to share my experience with you. So over the next couple of weeks and months, we release new videos and core concepts explaining the fundamental workings of the next generation firewall, starting with the trend landscape, then deployment methods, NAT, AppID, SSL decryption, VPNs, and many more. So follow us on LinkedIn, YouTube, or Twitter to stay up to date. But now let's have a look at the flexibility of layer 3 sub-interfaces. Let's say down here we have a DMZ. And in our DMZ, we want to kind of segregate all of the different applications into dedicated VLANs, right? So that, you know, in case one gets compromised, um, uh, you know, the other ones cannot cannot be infected. Okay, and for this, usually you kind of need lots of different subnets, right? Um, which you all want to terminate on the firewall. And, you know, in most cases, you wouldn't have, you know, so many interfaces on the firewall, right? And at the same time, Every time you want to set up a new DMZ, you probably do not want to kind of uh, go to the firewall, to the data center, and, and put in some cables. Okay, so that's a very good use case here for our sub interfaces. So what, how it works is that we have here, let's say, two VLANs, VLAN 11 and VLAN 22, all connected to a switch, and then the connection between the switch and the firewall is defined as a as a VLAN trunk. And this VLAN trunk now carries VLAN 11 and VLAN 22. Now looking at our firewall, what we need to do is, obviously here we have our interface and this kind of main interface, we just, the first thing what we need to do is we need to still define the interface type, okay? So we define the main interface as a layer tree interface. Um, but that's it, you know, we don't need to do anything else with this interface. And now what we do is we create a sub-interface of this kind of main interface. So let's say here, uh, one sub-interface for VLAN 11. So that's kind of the layer tree interface for VLAN 11, which is a sub-interface of this main interface. And then we're going to create, again, uh, another sub-interface for VLAN 22, also being a layer 3 interface. So and these sub-interfaces are basically, you know, behave like normal layer 3 interfaces, right? So obviously here we allocate the IP addresses. So let's say 192.168.22, you know, dot one we would allocate to this one. And then respectively on the other side, on VLAN 11, 192.168.11.1. .1. So, and beside this, you know, um, the setup really is just a normal tree interface, okay? So here we have, of course, again, our virtual router. And all of these sub-interfaces are also allocated to the virtual router. And then let's say on the outside, we have then a normal layer tree interface. Uh, which then pass the traffic, right? And with this, obviously, we can now have uh, full segregation. Um, from a zone point of view, obviously, on the outside, we can have our internet zone. And then here for the DMZs, you can decide. You can certainly put every interface into a dedicated zone. However, here, you need to be aware that, you know, there is a zone limit per firewall. So only on the kind of the amount of firewall, kind of the amount of zones, what you can define on the firewall. Um, this depends on, on the firewall model, how many these are. But usually, they're kind of rather lower numbers, right? So if you kind of plan to have a lot of DMZs, right, what you're probably better off is defining just one big DMZ zone. 
and then make sure that all the intrazone traffic, so traffic between DMZs, is also blocked. Means you then need to define a dedicated policy also for intrazone traffic uh, for this uh, for this DMZ zone. Talking about limits, now with these sub-interfaces, you can have now nearly endless amount of uh, interfaces on the firewall, right? But again, here also we need to be aware that there are limits. Um, also, these limits are actually pretty high. So when you go here to the Paul Alter Network's web page on products and then next generation firewall, you have a section here, compare firewalls. And this provides kind of very detailed information on kind of the resources, what you have available on the firewall. So for instance, if we're going to go down here and uh, let's look for our VM50, which is kind of the small firewall we have here in our, uh, in our, in our lab. Then we can see here VM50, go down to the section for interfaces, right? We can see, I mean, it supports 4094 tags, right? But, and that's the important thing, um, only 512 both logical and physical interfaces, okay? So the maximum amount of interfaces, no matter if they're logical or physical, right, is 512. Now, uh, only, well, I think 500 interfaces is quite a lot, um, and this value then, you know, once you have a bigger firewall, the bigger um, this, this value goes as well, okay? So, again, you know, pretty, pretty decent number, but, and that's the important thing, when you kind of plan your zones, there you do need to be a little bit careful, right? But let's say we go down here to zones, now I think it's on the upper part. We can see we only the VM50, for instance, only supports 15 zones, okay? So zone, the amount of zones usually are uh, quite limited, okay? So here you need, you need to be you need to do a bit, a bit of planning to make sure you're not running out of zones. And by the way, if you're interested in security best practices for Palo Alto Networks, then check out the blog on our webpage. Here in the best practice section, you can download this worksheet with over 120 best practices for the next generation firewall. And very soon, we will also launch a security best practice training with a lot of videos explaining all of these security best practices in detail. So if you're interested, then sign up to our mailing list and we will let you know as soon as this free training is available.